God, how do we not go back? God, how do we not go back? How do we not settle for less than what you have for us? God, I want that in 2020. God, I don't want to do church the same old, same old, the routine. God, the video announcements, the offering, the three songs, the two fast and one slow. God, I don't want to do that anymore. God, that doesn't change people's life. It's your power and your presence that changes people's lives. Well, after watching that clip, I guess I could say, be careful what you asked for. I don't know if you noticed that I said, Lord, I don't want to go back to doing church the way we used to do it. And I think the Lord is really wanting to answer that prayer. I've told you since the beginning of COVID-19 that I believe God wants to give the church a new wineskin so that we can handle the new wine that not only is he going to pour it, he's been pouring it out, but he wants us to be a vessel that contains the move of God in our day. As I was on vacation, Amy and I, we took Josiah to Green Bay to help him set up shop. We got him settled in an apartment there in Green Bay, which uh, you may have heard by now that he has signed uh, with the Green Bay Packers on Friday. And so it is official. He is an official cheesehead. And uh, we are looking forward uh, to his season, uh, no matter what it looks like. Right now, we don't know what it's going to look like, but we're going to be uh, his number one fans. And I hope you'll jump on the, the bandwagon with us. All right. So just thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for rooting us on uh, during this time. But I was on vacation and doing my devotions. And as I was just sitting quietly before the Lord, reading scripture, I felt the Lord drop a phrase into my heart. And he said, Dean, remember what I said. And I felt like he wanted me to come back and tell you, Real Life Church family, remember what he said. Deuteronomy 8.2, we're going to read a couple of passages of scripture before we get into the message. It says, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep the commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. And then 1 Timothy 1, 18 to 19 says, Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you. Based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier, may they help you fight well in the Lord's battles. Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their consciences. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. And I believe that God wants us to sail through this season and not be shipwrecked as the people of God. As I set the table this morning, I want to talk to you for a few minutes about prophetic leadership. As a young man, I remember being 18, 19 years old, just saved for a year. And I remember just my favorite place being in church was the very front row. I liked to get as close as I could. And I would listen intently to my pastor, John Paul Warren, who was preaching. I would hang on every word. As he spoke, I remember my spirit just getting stirred. I remember taking notes page after page after page. I really believe that I was receiving not just from a man, I was receiving a word from inspired by the Holy Spirit, a word directly from God. And I would sit on the edge of my chair just waiting to receive from the Lord. I believe that should be our expectation. Second Timothy 3.16 and 17 says, all scripture is God breathed 
and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, that's you and I, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So prophetic leadership is what I'm talking about. And so if we are preaching the scriptures, which are prophetic, because they're inspired by the breath of God, then God should be breathing through our preaching. Our preaching should be inspiring, not just inspirational, but Holy Spirit inspired. The church in Thessalonica had this expectation. 2 Thessalonians 4 13 says, and we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, catch this, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. You see, when you and I accept the word of God as heaven's word and not merely a human word, it goes to work in you and it goes to work for you. Let me say that again. When you receive God's word as a word from heaven, listen, it goes to work in you and it goes to work for you. You see, heaven's word comes with heaven's authority. Heaven's word comes with heaven's reality. Heaven's word comes with heaven's morality. And whenever we put his word into question, we question his authority. Whenever we put his word in question, we question his reality. Whenever we question his word, listen, we question his morality. And God wants us to give a, a heavenly word in this season so if I'm preaching prophetically and you are receiving it as an inspired prophetic word, we should be living and leading prophetically as God's people. We should be living as a prophetic people who, like the sons of Issachar, understand and know the times. You see, I really do believe during these times, the church should have the best solutions, the best ideas, the most significant breakthroughs. I believe that because the word equips us to be efficient in this season and not deficient in this season. Let me give you the concept of prophetic leadership that the Lord has been teaching me, especially as I've been pastor here at Real Life. Prophetic leadership, my definition is inspiring others through the power of the Holy Spirit to live and lead according to what God is saying. And I felt like the Lord wanted you and I this morning to remember what He spoke to us at the beginning of 2020. You know, I know there are a lot of voices and I know there is a temptation that in this time, when you're in this season, we're just grabbing onto any word. We're listening to any voice. But can I just encourage you, Real Life Church family, the Lord has already spoken to us about this season. Oh, yes, he has. When we started off this year, we kicked off as a tag team, a message by our entire team. And the word that God gave us was unlimited, that God God in 2020 would not be limited to doing one thing, but no, he would do many things. And I wanted to bring this body back to what he said. Real life church family, we need to remember. We don't need necessarily a new word. We don't need a new word to tickle our ears or to tell us what we want to hear. No, we need to go back to what God has already said about this season for our lives and for our church. Deuteronomy 8, 2 says, And you shall remember that the Lord your God has led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. I don't know about you, but the last four months can seem a lot of times like 40 years. But here's the key. The thing is, we need to remember when we are living and leading prophetically. You see, God hasn't left you. God has led you all the way. God hasn't left us. He has led us all the way. Not some of the way. Not part of the way. Not halfway. No, the scripture says that he leads us all the way. Why? Verses 
2, 3, to humble you, to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Really quick, I want to give you three things that will help you when God is leading you through difficulty. I don't know about you, but there, there are a lot of people I talk to that are having difficulty in this season. I want to give you three things real quickly from this passage that will help you. Number one, humility. Humility, listen, in this season means yielding to the Holy Spirit, saying yes to the Holy Spirit. And I want to just encourage you, stop resisting and start resting. Start, stop resisting what he said and start resting in what he said. Secondly, a heart examination. Can I ask you this question? Is there anything in your heart that is preventing you from putting your complete trust in God's word and what he has spoken because listen, when we pass the test, we'll trust his word. And then third, a hunger. A hunger for us, for you to live out heaven's word for your life. Again, every year we take January to lean into what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us as a body. And again, we kicked off uh, with a tag team message this year. And again, real life church family, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to emphasize this. Remember what I said to you. And so the first thing that actually God spoke through Pastor Michelle was remember God said 2020 is going to be uncomfortable. But look, there are some things that we think that just because it makes us uncomfortable or we don't like doing it, that we're not called to do it. But in reality, those are the points in our life where God actually gets the most glory and the most praise from our life. There are promises for, from God that in order to be fulfilled require us to be uncomfortable. And then the Lord does these things where he's like, hey, Lord, like I need to get you uncomfortable because there's things like I'm building you up. Like th this is not the place that he's building me to. He's still got more that he wants to build. And there's still things that he wants to build in you in 2020, but you need to be obedient and begin to get a little uncomfortable. I really, really believe that there's things that God wants to do in your life and through Real Life Church in 2020 that's gonna require us to get uncomfortable. It's gonna require us to step out of our comfort zone and what we think I'm not called to is really the thing that the Lord is calling you to because He wants to be glorified, not for you to receive the glory. Man, I thank God for a prophetic team. I'm surrounded by prophetic people. I can't help but be encouraged and strengthened as the lead pastor of this church, as you're going to be reminded of today. You know, I truly believe if we as a church will continue to embrace the uncomfortable, we will soon experience the uncommon. You see, we've experienced uncomfortable circumstances, no doubt, during this season. Both my kids, young adult kids, came home, and yes, it was a blessing, but it wasn't always comfortable, right? And then we've intentionally, uh, during our midweeks, had uncomfortable conversations. The entire body of Christ has been shaken out of its comfort zone. So listen, this morning, let's make a decision never to go back to the comfort zone. Why? Because when we embrace the uncomfortable, it will lead us to our new normal. I was just this week got back in town and I met with Pastor Kyle Johnson of the Crossing Church, which is just a couple of blocks down the road. And we were just, uh, you know, matching stories, comparing our notes during the season, especially over the last uh, few weeks. And uh, everyone remembers uh, when, you know, things are changing all the time, but we were talking about not being able to sing. And they actually followed the guideline to the T. And one of the things that he said really, really spoke to me. He said, you know what? He said, there are so many words 
for praise. And he said in Hebrew, and only a few of them have to do with singing. And I began to think about that. You know, if you can't sing, does that mean you can't worship? Not at all. It means you can dance. It means you can clap your hands. It means you can bow down before the Lord. It means you can lift your hands. It means you can sit in silent and meditate upon who he is. You see, singing don't stop you from worshiping the Lord. I believe the Lord wants us to express to him our worship in many different ways. Outside of these walls, everything we do is for the glory of God but he wants us to embrace the uncomfortable so it will lead us to a new normal. Secondly, remember, we will have to choose joy in 2020. Pastor Isaiah reminded us of how to choose joy. It's not good enough anymore to just be a great example to them. We have to be intentional missionaries to these young people. And, and they're looking not just for your words of faith or your words of scripture and words of hope, but they want to see true joy in our lives. As a child of God, even when we take some L's, even when we lose a little bit here and there, even when a loved one passes away, even when the finances aren't there, even when we're stressed out, that we have to choose to, to put on the joy of God. We have to choose to put on the joy of God because the joy of the Lord is truly, truly our strength. I didn't say this first service, but I, I want to say even this year, I, I think strategically this year that, you know, even it, it's an election year, that the joy of the Lord is going to have to be our strength. I'm sure most of us have heard that happiness depends on our external circumstances and it's temporary, but true joy is eternal and cannot be taken away. You know, that's something that's really easy to say, but really difficult to live out. And after listening to Pastor Isaiah talk about joy, the Holy Spirit highlighted to me the word intentional when he was sharing. The word intentional means to do something the way it was designed to be done. I believe God is asking us to be intentional about our joy on this current journey we are on. Because there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of unknown. But listen, we serve a God, listen, who's not confused about the future. He is certain about our future. And joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, you can read and study there. In other words, when I choose to walk in the Spirit, because we have a choice in this season to bear fruit or be in the flesh. But when I choose to walk in the Spirit, my life is going to produce fruit. In fact, Galatians 5 says it's not only going to produce joy, it's going to produce love, it's going to produce peace, it's going to produce patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, I'm not talking about happy because the DeGuara family has had plenty of happy moments during this COVID-19, which has tried to put a damper on things, which I'm sure it's tried to put a damper on your life as well. But when I'm intentional about choosing to walk in the Spirit, not according to my flesh, not according to how I feel, listen, not only do I get to experience the fruit of the Spirit, the people around me actually get to taste what the kingdom of God is all about. And let me ask you this, church. What taste are you leaving in people's mouth? Is the joy in your life contagious or is the junk in your life contaminating the folks around you? The third thing that the Lord wanted me to remind you of today Pastor Brandon spoke, it was this, remember the heavy rain is coming in 2020. I'm just believing God for big and great things in 2020. Uh, and the word that the Lord uh, kind of dropped into my heart is the sound of rain. This is what I believe that now in 2020 as we worship, God says, I'm going to upgrade your cloud to a heavy rain. Listen, listen. I'm sending the rain to change everything. But those who really love the rain are those 
who understand the purpose of rain. And the rain comes to water. And those of us that have been sowing seed, this is the season because God says, I'm exposing the fruit that's in the ground. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That doesn't mean I'm going to wash it away. What that means is as the water flows, you're going to see things growing. And all of the tears that you sowed, Pastor Isaiah said, I'm going to raise you up some joy for your tears. Uh, all the things that you are worried about, I'm exchanging your worry for confidence. I'm exchanging your lack for plenty. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's what rain comes to do. See, the rain of God is the presence of God. Oh my goodness, and if you begin to worship, I believe in 2020 that the presence of God is gonna reign in this place. You're not gonna be able to walk in and things be the same. Listen, wait, wait, and listen, this is what God says. God says, as you begin to worship and as the rain begins to fall, everything that's been stuck, all that dirt, all that grime, all that past sin, all that regret, I'm gonna begin to wash it down. I'm going to wash it off of you. And those of you that are not afraid for those things to be exposed, I'm going to run it down. But listen, I'm not going to run it down anywhere. I'm going to run it down to the river where it can be washed as far as the east is from the west. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I think a key of what God is asking us to remember is this, as you begin to worship. Let me say that again. As you begin to worship, you know, I believe some of us are still waiting to worship. We're waiting to worship at church again. We're waiting to get our praise on once the doors open again. We're still waiting for things to get back to the way they were. We're still waiting for the songs we like. We're still waiting not to have to wear masks. And I believe God has clearly spoken to us as you begin to worship. Listen, as you begin to worship, I'm going to wash you. I'm going to wash over you with my love. I'm going to wash over you with my hope. I'm going to wash over you with faith as you begin to worship. Not wait on worship, but as you begin to worship. The last couple of weeks, I don't know if you've been able to tune into our midweek conversations, but Pastor Damien, Pastor Brandon, and Crystal Stallworth Little, they've been talking and teaching us about the importance of engaging in personal worship during this season. You see, we've been conditioned to allow others to worship for us, but God said, as you begin to worship. In fact, right now in your living room, wherever you're watching, listen, I just want you to lift your hands and just yield to the Holy Spirit right in this moment. Listen, maybe you've been resisting, maybe you've been waiting, but right now you would just lift your hands and you would just begin to worship and allow the Holy Spirit to wash over you. Allow the Holy Spirit to renew you. Allow the Holy Spirit to restore you in this season. Stop resisting as I mentioned earlier, and start resting in who He is as you begin. Listen, not as your wife begins. No man of God, as you begin to worship, I'm going to reveal to you who I am. You see, you can be disappointed by the rain and allow it to wash you out, or you can allow the rain of His presence to wash over you. I want to encourage you in this season and remind you, allow God, as Pastor Brandon spoke so eloquently, to upgrade your cloud in this season and allow His presence to become personal to you in 2020. Allow His presence to become personal to you in the midst of this storm. Allow God's presence to become personal to you as you face the problems that have arise during this season. But listen, as you begin to worship, God's going to wash over you. The fourth thing that I want you to remember, Pastor Jesse mentioned, and she said 2020 will be a year of giant challenges. And in 2020, most like you, I see challenges, giant challenges that I will not know how to overcome. 
I see giant problems that will cause me to worry and wonder. I see giant issues glaring inside of me and others that will call me to be more patient than I can be. I see giant disappointments and surprises that will cause me to stop in my tracks and become overwhelmed. I see giants coming against me, coming against my family, coming against my church, and coming against my God. But then, I remember, hold on, hold on. My problem is not the giant issues. The problem is that I see myself as a grasshopper facing giants. And while the truth is that there are giant problems, the truth is also that I am a giant killer. If we are to be giant killers, then we have got to have 20-20 perception. See, 2020 vision will only give you an accurate picture of what's in front of you, but 2020 perception will help you see past the facts and go beyond the impossible. We must perceive ourselves as giant killers and then train like ones. We've got to be soaking in the word so that wisdom becomes part of our nature. We've got to activate the Spirit of God in us through prayer and earthly and heavenly language so that we are full of His power and might. We've got to be speaking and standing on our testimonies so that God's provision becomes an expectation of our future and not boiled down to a wish list of resolutions. We've got to seek Him and do what we are created to do, to be in perfect union with our Father because your dad is gonna be the one to tell you, child, there are giants in the land, but they got nothing on you because you have a family name. But in 2020, let's change their perspective. There are no grasshoppers here. There are only giant killers. I got to be honest with you, when I first heard that word that 2020 was going to be filled with giant challenges, I was rebuking the devil in Jesus' name. But I'm so thankful that we have an executive pastor that hears from God. And actually, God, the Holy Spirit was speaking through her to prepare us for what was going to happen in 2020. And she mentioned that 2020 perception is going to help you and I see past the facts, see past the statistics, and go beyond the impossible in this season. You see, church, we have to perceive ourselves as giant killers in the midst, listen, of giant challenges. It's time to eliminate the grasshoppers from our thinking and to get clear about what God has already said to Real Life Church. I want you to say, wherever you're at, just say, I am a giant killer. Go ahead and say it again. Come on, wake your neighbors up this morning and say, I am a giant killer. Listen, even in the midst of giant challenges, God can give us a city. Even in the midst of giant challenges, God God can increase our influence, and He is. Even in the midst of giant challenges, God can cause us to abound, and He is. Even in the midst of giant challenges, God can bring your business into a place that it's never been before. And guess what? He's doing it through several businesses in our church. Listen, you have never passed this way before, says the Lord. You've never been through a pandemic, and I believe God is releasing giant killing courage to open overcome the challenges that you and I are facing. You see, God has already spoken over us that the holy boldness is coming to real life church, that God is going to put a holy boldness on this house and there is courage coming to say that we can believe God for anything. There is courage coming that will reach people nobody else is reaching. There is a courage coming that will allow us to do things that have never been done before. Remember, a year that is filled with giant challenges. Listen, calls for giant killers to be raised up in this hour. Fifthly, I want to remind you about what Pastor Damien spoke. He said that in 2020, the Lord wants to enlarge your territory. Out of 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10, it says, And Jabez called on God of Israel. Aren't you so glad that when you call on God, He answers? 
And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand will be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Here's the part that I want us to lean in. So God granted him his request. I believe in 2020, if you are so courageous to ask God to enlarge your territory, I believe in 2020, the Lord wants to enlarge your territory. Amen. I feel this is a word for somebody. If you would surrender the relationship, if you would surrender the dream, if you would surrender the word or the vision to the word of God and make sure it lines up. And if that dream, that hope, that relationship, that endeavor lines with the word of the God, then guess what? God will grant your request and your territory will be enlarged. God does not want to give us a refurbished 2019 into 2020. God doesn't want to give you a recycled year going into the next year. God doesn't want to give you recycled uh, uh, promises. No, there were some things that were in 2019 that he's promised you and there's some new things that he's going to promise you in 2020. And guess what? You might have missed some opportunities, opportunities to see God manifest something in 2019. But the God I serve, if you mess up plan A and you mess up plan B, he can still make plan C better than plan A, better than plan B. Stop investing into dead things. It's time to let go. God cannot pour new wine in old wineskin. So in order for the Lord to do new things, in order for the Lord to do a fresh thing, in order for the Lord to enlarge your territory, you're going to have to let go of some things. You see, I love how all this is flowing together because challenges and problems set us up for expansion. Even when things are on the decrease all around you. Listen, God's people, he's setting his people up for increase. I've said it this way, that God expands the heart before he expands the house. I'd encourage you to watch this entire message from beginning to end, from Michelle to me wrapping it up at the end. But listen, I want to just reiterate what Pastor Damien was talking about was not just limited to geographical and physical locations because the most important territory God could expand for you and I during this time is the spiritual territory of our heart. You see, there are a lot of issues in our society right now, but listen, they all stem from one place, the issues of the heart. You don't believe me? Mark 7, verses 21 to 23. Evil originates from inside a person. Coming out of a human heart are evil schemes, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, treachery, debauchery, jealousy, slander, arrogance, and recklessness. All these things, corrupt things, emerge from within and constantly pollute a person. Listen, this is what I want to encourage you with as God wants to expand the territory, the spiritual territory in your heart. Listen, he wants dominion. He wants to be Lord of your life. Don't ignore the issues that are surfacing in your heart. Don't ignore the issues that are inside of you. Allow the Holy Spirit to expand your heart beyond the issues that are being exposed so you can receive the expansion that the promises of God want to bring to your life. You see, many of us want expansion without exposure. Many of us, listen, we want expansion without exposure. What do I mean by that? Again, I said this several weeks ago, that listen, when God begins to do a work, how you know he has to expose things? Listen, light, come on, invades darkness. And when he does, listen, we've got to submit to those things. We can't resist the light. We can't resist the truth. No, we have to yield to it. And we have to say, God, these issues have surfaced in my life and I need you to deal with them, God, because I want to expand beyond where I'm at. I don't want to be limited. I don't want to be stuck and, and in the same place next year than I am right now. No, God, I want you to deal with those issues. I don't want to ignore them. Holy Spirit, you've revealed it. Holy Spirit, you've exposed it. And now I'm asking you to excavate those things out of the 
deep darkness of my heart and help me to expand the borders of my spiritual life. He wants to do that for you, church. He really does. That's his heart. And maybe because you've been close up with a lot of people, you've been quarantined with the same folks for about four months now. Listen, maybe things have surfaced. Listen, don't suppress those things. Allow God to deal with those things and get healthy. Get your spiritual life in order. Get on track. Listen, don't wait for the church doors to open again. Allow God to rend your heart right now and begin to heal you and make you whole. Let him deal with the issues that are surfacing in your heart. And then lastly, I want to remind you to remember that 2020 will be a year of protecting the unity of this house. But I just felt like the Lord wanted us as a whole to take on this assignment, and it is this, protect the unity of the house. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Everybody say unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there, everybody say there, the Lord commanded the blessing life forever more. Listen, this is what I want to just say over you with this exhortation. Protect the unity of house. Listen, where there is unity, there is oil. Where there is oil, there is a commanded blessing of life. And where there is unity, there is a constant flow of kingdom life. And listen, if we want to see more of the kingdom and we want to be, listen, we want to be dialed into the things of the spirit, how many know we've got to be willing to put to death our flesh? Come on, we've got to be willing for the things, come on, that come in to try to separate us. We've got to be willing to lay those things down and let our hearts connect at a different level. Amen. I'm not going to take time to quote the verse because we quote it all the time around the subject of unity. But Psalm 133 says unity is like precious oil. Precious oil in biblical times was expensive. In other words, it came at a great cost. You know this because when Mary Magdalene broke the alabaster jar and anointed Jesus, the disciples were upset because that oil was so expensive. And this is what I want to tell you, Real Life Church. I didn't get to share this back, uh, back in January. I didn't get to this far in my notes, but I went back and I want to share it with you now. Protecting our unity is going to cost us something if we want to see the commanded blessing at Real Life Church. Let me say that again. Unity is going to cost us something if we want to see the commanded blessing come to Real Life Church. And I did an acrostic. I wasn't able to share it, but I want to give you what I believe it's going to cost Real Life Church. Number one, prayer and intercession. In fact, I'm right now just asking God. I believe He's going to call us to a season again of prayer and fasting. I don't know if you remember, but COVID interrupt, interrupted our annual fast. And I believe God wants to bring us back to that place, pick up where we left off, and begin to just storm heaven with our prayer and intercession. This is the question I want to ask you and challenge you with. Again, I want you, I want, I want you to probe and search your heart. Here's the question. In 2020, the rest of the year, can we be more prayerful than political? Can we be more prayerful than political. You see, we have to be unified in prayer. And that's what we're going to do. Listen, we're not just going to bring about solutions just by talking about it. We're going to bring about solutions by praying and asking God to intervene. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We're going to have to pay the price of prayer in intercession. Secondly, we're going to have to bring repentance. Here's the question I want to ask you. Can we be more humble the rest of 2020 
instead of hostile? Can we be more humble towards one another than hostile towards one another? You see, humility and honesty before the Lord, I believe, will move us from a place of resistance to a place of repentance. The third is an O, obedience. Here's the question, can we obey the voice of the Holy Spirit that wants to unite us instead of the voices of culture that want to divide us? Listen, obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit is key in this hour. And I just want to challenge you. Listen, silence the noise. Read His Word. Listen to what God is saying in this season and obey. The T is for trust. And the question I want us to search our lives is this, can we trust God more during this time instead of leaning on our own understanding? Listen, I know we can quote Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 by heart. But listen, can we really put it to practice and really trust the Lord? Trust His Word in this season. Trust what He said to us back in January. You know, Amy and I got a gift at the end of last year. It's actually in our home and it's on a wall and it says, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. And I want to just tell you real life, let's not live with timidity. Let's not live with limits, but let's allow bold trust in what God has said to us. Lead us beyond the places of comfortability in our lives right now. Endurance. E is for endurance. And this is what I want to ask you. Can we not give way to the enemy? Can we not give way to the enemy? Endurance is this. It's the power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. In other words, let's make a decision right now. Let's make a decision to outlast the enemy. Let's not give the enemy any room, not even a foothold to divide us, to come in and cause havoc. No, no, let's protect the unity of the house and not give him any place among us. The C is for character. And the question that I have for us is, can we allow God in this season to develop our character? You see, some of us are so concerned about being correct that we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to correct our character flaws. How many know Jesus said, take the plank out of your own eye before removing it from a brother's eye? You see, I believe Listen, God is leading us, and we're going to be talking about this in the coming weeks. God is calling us to a crucified life. Again, I told you several weeks ago, listen, God gets glorified from a crucified body. Listen, when we lay our lives down for one another, Jesus will be glorified in this hour. And if we want more of the Spirit, we have to be willing to embrace the death of our sinful nature that was nailed on the cross 2,000 years ago so that today we could fully live alive together in what He's called us to do. And then lastly, the T is for truth. And this is what I want to encourage you with. Listen, culture does not nullify Scripture. Culture does not nullify Scripture. We have to value the truth of Scripture more than ever before. And at the same time, listen to me, church, we have to be full of grace. How many know Jesus was both full of grace and truth? You can't have truth without grace, and you can't have grace without truth. We need to focus, listen, on caring for one another. That was one of the things that happened at our church from home training this past Thursday with Pastor Derek Olson. He said a phrase, he said, one of the things that we're doing as people are gathering in their homes is, listen, we're focusing on caring. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing to do as a body during this season? Listen, is to focus on caring for one another. Focus on being concerned about one another. 
I believe that's what God is calling us to, to focus on caring for one another and refrain, and refrain from feeling like it's our job to always correct one another. You see, if you really want to correct someone, you know, there is a biblical pattern, Matthew 18. If you really want to correct someone, how about having a caring and concerned conversation Having a face-to-face, listen, instead of like just posting on Facebook, listen, really having a face-to-face conversation. RLC family, I want to encourage you to remember what he said. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. It was the passage, one of the passages I read at the beginning. It says this, Timothy, my son. Will you just take that for a moment and put your name right there? Will you say, Dean, my son? Whatever your name is, Amy, my daughter. Put your name right there. Here are my instructions for you. Based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. Based on the prophetic words, because how many know the nature of preaching is prophetic? Listen, Based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier in January of 2020, before any of this stuff happened, God says, I already seen it coming. And I, listen, I equipped and I gave my word to my vessels to speak to you. Will you listen to me? I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying that to us today. Listen, Dean, my son, Here are my instructions for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. May they help you fight well in the Lord's battles. You see, that 2020 is going to be uncomfortable. That we will have to choose joy in 2020. That the heavy rain is coming in 2020. That 2020 will be a year of giant challenges. That in 2020, the Lord wants to enlarge your territory. And that 2020 will be a year where we will have to protect the unity of this house. Real Life Church family, remember what he said. And let's fight well in the Lord's battles. You see, it's not your battle. It's the Lord's battle. Let's stop fighting each other and start fighting the real enemy. The real battle, listen, is a spiritual battle. And real life church family, I just believe God wanted me to come to you today and tell you, remember what I said. Remember what I told you about this season. Back in January, will you fight well? My battle, not your battle, my battle. Will you fight well in this season? Let me pray for you. Dear Lord Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you, God, that you are faithful to speak to us and to declare us, declare to us, Lord, things, God, that have not yet come. And God, I thank you, God, for a prophetic people. I thank you for a prophetic staff, a prophetic team, God, that you use to speak to your church. And God, this morning, I just say, Lord, we submit to that word. God, we submit, God, to be uncomfortable. God, we submit to choose joy. God, we submit to be expectant for the heavy rain that is coming. God, we submit... God, to expect and not be surprised by giant challenges. God, we expect you to expand the territory. And God, we expect and know what you are expecting of us to protect the unity of this house. Holy Spirit, we yield and submit to your word. Listen, I just feel like before I go today, listen, that there is somebody. Listen, you've been resisting in this season. You've been waiting And the Lord is asking for your surrender. He's asking for your surrender. And listen, I don't know who you are. I don't know how many of you there are. But listen, right now, just wherever you're at, you just lift your hands and you just symbolically as saying, God, I surrender and I submit myself to your word. Become Lord of my life. Jesus, 
take over. Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the lead of my life. God, and I will follow you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I love you. Thank you for staying engaged in this season. And let's fight well for the duration of 2020. <laughs>